you know, we, I try to ask nicely for these teams and agents. And if you're going to have a big story, do it during business hours in the East when people are at work and they're looking for reasons yeah. to not work. They're not as dialed in when they're on their own time. I'd much rather big news hit between the hours of, let's just say, 8 and 6. I, I won't be greedy. I won't go 9 to 5, although that's that's even better. 8 and 6 is fine, East Coast time. But last night, late afternoon, early evening, came the news of Trevor Lawrence on getting his new contract. Let's have a listen to the precursor to this. This is Trevor from just a couple of weeks ago at OTAs on his contract talks. Obviously, I'm, I'm aware of, of what's going on, but uh, I try to keep my focus on, you know, doing my job out here. You know, I've, I have full uh, belief that, that that'll take care of itself, and that's not something that I need to worry about. You know, that's why I pay people and, and hire people to do that for me. So um, that's not my job. But, you know, obviously, I know what's going on. I'm aware of the situation. I think that's important, too. But, yeah, I try to keep all my focus and energy on being the best player I can be to help us win. You have any timetable at all? <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think that would be... That would be ideal, you know, just to, to put it behind us and um, and keep moving and, and feel good about that going into training camp. But either way, like I've said before, I have the same job. So, you know, I can't always control all those um, factors, but I have the same job to do either way. You never know when the deadlines are actually going to be, and they call it a deadline-driven business, and that's a mantra we hear whenever a deal gets done right up against some real or artificial deadline. There's no deadline here. They still have weeks to go until the start of training camp if that was the deadline. But, you know, sometimes, and I applaud, I applaud the two sides who can get past the negotiating game and just say, let's get this done. Let's get this done. You know, we're adults here. I'll go toward my bottom line, and I'll trust that you'll go toward your bottom line and not drag your feet until we get to a deadline, and then you you try to pull me off my bottom line. That's where the reticence comes from to go to your bottom line in advance of a deadline. You get there early. When the deadline arrives, they're going to try to get a little more out of you. I prefer a more self-aware negotiation where they say, we just want to get this done now. Let's not play games. Let's not try to screw each other on this. Let's get this done. And kudos to the Jaguars and Trevor Lawrence's representatives for getting it done. Well, and Mike, as we always know, the sooner you get these done, the better it is for the team because the price is only going to go up. And I know we're going to talk about other quarterbacks a little bit later in this, but th this is going to end up being, if Trevor Lawrence is who they think he is and they drafted him number one overall, and they've obviously seen enough to think that he's that guy, otherwise there was no reason to sign him to this contract. So they, they think he's the guy. If he is, this is going to end up being a good deal because they got it done before Tua, before Dak, before every other quarterback who's up for a contract extension at this point. So good for them, good for Trevor Lawrence that he now gets his money and now he can go prove that he's the guy that they drafted number one overall and that was supposed to be this generational talent. We haven't seen all of that yet, but he's 25 years old. We've seen flashes of it. We've seen that we think he can do it, but now he's got to go do it. And he's got to cut down on those turnovers, which he's had way too many of it. 21 last year, which was tied, which was third in the NFL. He has 60 over his career. That's just too many turnovers. But if he does that, Mike, I, I think this is going to end up being a good deal for the Jaguars. Well, especially because the market keeps going up, the salary cap keeps going up. And when you look at this, five years, $275 million, $55 million a year, matches the, the high watermark set last year by Joe Burrow. Remember this, two years were left on the Trevor Lawrence rookie deal. The full value at signing is going to be lower than 55. We'll have the full breakdown at PFT. We always try to get the deal, all the points, signing bonus, first year salary, second year salary, how many years are fully guaranteed at signing, how many years are guaranteed as a practical matter. So far, what we know is $200 million is guaranteed generally at signing, $142 million fully guaranteed at signing. More of it may vest before they would ever get to the point where they would cut him. And one of the realities with most franchise quarterback contracts, the player doesn't get cut. The player yeah. gets every penny. You don't need to guarantee it unless it is a mobile quarterback who might end up getting injured and becoming ineffective. 
that's when you might have a team looking to escape a contract prematurely. Usually you don't need to do it. And I think of Deshaun Watson, if he didn't have every penny fully guaranteed, the Browns could be looking to escape that contract already. So there's a benefit in having full guarantee last as long as possible if you want to make as much money as you can beyond the point where you're earning the money at the level your contract would suggest. But the key with Lawrence is, as you said, get it done now because 55 today might not have been 55 in two weeks if Tua yeah. does his deal, if Dak does his deal. There's a race by the teams to get these deals done before other deals push the number higher. And that's been one of the big criticisms I've had of Jerry Jones for as great yeah. of a job they've done of finding young talent and developing young talent. They pay the wrong guys and they don't pay the right guys and they wait too long to pay the right guys and the price only goes up unless the guy has a catastrophic injury that limits his career. I mean, hell, Dak had the broken ankle and he still got four yeah. years, 160 before he ever set foot on a field again after that ankle healed. It's got to be something that obviously is going to make the player not who he was before you're in a position where the number goes down, not up. Otherwise, the number always goes up. Because that was, look, one of the things we say when Jared Goff gets $53 million, when Lawrence gets $55 million, when Tua gets whatever he's going to get, who are you bidding against? There's yeah. no one that's saying, I'll give him 54 5 There's no auction for quarterback contracts. You're negotiating in a vacuum. But what you're trying to do is lock in before, and as Tua said last week, the market is the market, and the market's going to change. I still think one of these days there's going to be a team that says, no, the Vikings kind of did that with Kirk Cousins. Go ahead and hit the market. We have our offer. Go ahead and get something better if you want to. And he did. And that still might be what happens with Tua. It might be what happens with Dak. Until these deals are done, that possibility is there. I never got the impression, though, the Jaguars were even considering anything other than saying, hey, this is the one guy from the class of 2021 that hasn't been yeah. traded for a third day pick to another team. Let's 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 invest in this guy and let's move forward. Yeah, because they didn't have to do it now, Mike. They could have waited, but they obviously have confidence in the fact that they that he's the guy for them and he's going to be the guy long term. So they did lock him in. So if you if you have that belief, forget people are going to debating oh well, is he worth it? The market is what the market is. And the Jaguars feel like he's the guy. So if that's the case, and it is, you lock him into that and you do it as soon as possible. And that's what they've done. So kudos to them for believing in Trevor Lawrence and getting that long-term deal done and not waiting when the price only goes up. They've only had two other quarterbacks that they drafted earn an extension, Mike, and that was David Garrard, seven years, $69.4 million in 2007, and Blake Bortles, three years, $54 million. Um, in in 2018. So this is a big deal for the Jaguars. And, and he's already the best quarterback in team history, I would say. And after only three years, so this, this, he's going to keep getting better. He should keep getting better at 25 years old and only three years in the league. And the Blake Bortles extension wasn't a typical extension. What they did, yeah. they went to him right before his fifth-year option salary was going to become fully guaranteed because back in those days, pre-2020, the option year for a first-round pick wasn't fully guaranteed until right. that league year began. It was guaranteed for injury when exercised. Now it's fully guaranteed. They went to him and said, we're going to cut you. We are, we are not going to pay this fifth-year option salary. We're going to cut you. We need to do a longer-term deal that gives us some more security that you're going to be here. And then they got rid of him. They got rid of him. Yeah. So they've they've really only had a very, very small handful of guys over the years. Brunel and Gerard, the two you mentioned. Um, how long was Leftwich there? Was Leftwich there? Am I – where Leftwich was – I don't know how long he made it there. Um, but regardless, this is the guy that could be their potential long-term – franchise answer he was the guy after his freshman year at Clemson we all flagged as potential future franchise quarterback he got them to the round of eight 
in his second season. The first year was the Urban Meyer shit show. I had to get it in one time on our last day before before hiatus. And then last year, he got banged up a little bit. The offensive line, this is something Chris has pointed out, the offensive line yep. wasn't nearly as good as it's been in the past. So they see, they see top-of-the-market franchise quarterback potential from Trevor Lawrence, and they're willing to make the investment. And, you know, again, for every team that considers – why are we giving this much money to the quarterback? You got to ask yourself, what's your alternative? And your alternative is a bunch of bad quarterbacks that the Jaguars have had over the years. Yeah. Byron Leftwich, by the way, thank you, Gary was first four seasons in Jacksonville. He's 24 20 as a starter, which in Jacksonville actually has been probably pretty good. Um, Trevor Lawrence is 20 and 30, right? now as a starter if you if you do the quarterback's record as a starting quarterback some people like that some people don't but the team is 20 and 30 with Trevor Lawrence so you know he started out last year Mike with eight and three and then he had that string of injuries and they didn't finish as well he missed one start with with the, the three injuries he had which was a high ankle sprain a concussion and a shoulder sprain and he was the same quarterback. And part of that, as you as said, and Chris Sims said, was him just getting beat up by that offensive line. It just wasn't good. And they feel like they've improved that this year. So we'll see. I would still say after one year of seeing C.J. Stroud, I think C.J. Stroud is the best quarterback in the division. But you think about the quarterbacks in that division. Now, that could be a really good division if those quarterbacks or who those teams think they are. I think the jury's still out on Anthony Richardson and Will Levis. But you've got four young quarterbacks there who really could be the long-term answer for those teams. The odds of that probably are not very good because four teams aren't going to usually be really good in a division because one team's usually better than the others. But um, you've got four young quarterbacks there with potential, Mike. You know, that is a good point, though. Within a given division, there is an element of that zero-sum game where somebody's going to be in fourth place, and how do you justify giving a big contract to the quarterback of a team that is in third or fourth place every year? Even if he's got great numbers, if you're not winning football games, it's hard to get behind the idea of paying the guy market value, and everybody wants the franchise quarterback. Everybody wants the guy who is top five or at a minimum top ten, and you either have one or or you don't, or you fall into the category of where the Colts and Titans currently are. We don't know what this guy's going to be, and we're in the process of finding out. Which way is he going to break? Is he going to break franchise quarterback, or is he going to go the other way? And the reality is, at any given time, there's only five or ten. So you got to start crowding out. you got to be boxing out. you got to be elbowing out of the way some of these guys who are already established. And that's either because they dip, or it's because others get better. That was the first slide for Russell Wilson. When he started to slip down Chris's rankings, it wasn't because Wilson was getting worse. It's because here's Josh Allen. Here's Lamar yeah. Jackson. Here's Patrick Mahomes. These younger guys come in, and they're just better. So these young guys need to come in and be better than the guys who are already playing. It's, it's not an easy thing to do, and it's one of the reasons why we saw so many quarterbacks get drafted in round one. In the top 12 this year, everyone is looking for that guy that they can pay $55 million a year to, or $60 million, or sixty five. And remember this point. Let's not get freaked out by the numbers because it's driven by the cap, and the owners are making a hell of a lot more than the 55. They get half, and they have 100% of the equity. The, the tide keeps rising. The boats are all going up. The money keeps going up. That's one of the reasons why 55 is more, 55 is more of a bargain this year than last year because the salary cap went up 15% from when Burrow got 55. So the market right. should go up. The numbers should increase. But we only hear what the players make. If we heard with the same degree of specificity what the owners were making, oh, my God these player contracts would look like nothing in comparison because they are. Well, and you brought up Joe Burrow, his 55 million last year, as you said, was a bigger part of the salary cap than obviously Trevor Lawrence's 55 million this year. So this is a better deal based on the percentage of the salary cap that you're using. 
And it's again, it it's it the salary cap's going to keep going up. So this is going to end up, if Trevor Lawrence is who they think he is, end up being a good deal for the Jaguars because they did it now, because they didn't wait two weeks from now, a month from now, two months from now, two years from now, which they could have done, Mike. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.